Hey everyone, today I'd like to share with you the old school Recon 1 and how this first knife, my first grail knife, began my whole knife collection. So as a teen, I was very interested in World War II and the history behind it and the weapons of the time. So amongst those weapons, my favorite was the iconic K-Bar USMC fixed blade. I wanted one badly for myself, but it was I was too young and those things were kind of expensive for me at the time. I didn't really have uh, my own money in anything, you know, I was still in high school, so it was a different time back then. But I was talking to my friend once about it and somebody, you know, who also shares interest of weapons and, you know, he mentioned a TV show that I did not know about at the time called Deadliest Warrior. <laughs> he mentioned that this show had a demonstration. You mentioned that this show had a demonstration of my beloved K-Bar and in one episode. So I went ahead and I watched the whole series. When I came across that episode, they compared it side by side with this knife. This is the knife I'm holding here today, the Cold Steel Recon 1. Since then, I became interested in owning one of these. And unfortunately, I came to find that it was discontinued a couple years before I found out about it. And the new version was very, very different. I have one over here for reference. This is my newest one. This is like a third generation, I would call it, because they redesigned it with, a, with very similar materials to this one, the same metal, the same kind of coating, and eventually they redesigned it again with a better um, blade steel and a better coating for that steel. However, I'm gonna show this knife more in detail, perhaps in another video. So, unfortunately, this knife was discontinued and it was really hard for me to find. They didn't have it on their website or anything, but I went around and I looked around for long enough and eventually I came across one of these on eBay. eBay still had them pop up from time to time, so that was my go-to place for this. The first one I bought was the exact one from the show. It was the same Tonto Point one, but it was half serrated over here. And it's just simply the knife that they showed there and they like spoke about it very highly. Even though I believe in the competition between the K-Bar and this knife, this knife is obviously a folding knife. The K-Bar was a fixed blade. So I think that knife obviously in the show was um, what they called it, they given the edge. So I still was very interested in this knife for the simple fact that it was a folding knife. And I knew nothing about folding knives or different brands of knives or anything like that. So all that was still very new territory for me as well. After I bought that first one, there was actually like a, a short period there where I was buying a lot of them. Like every time I saw one of these on eBay, I went ahead and purchased it because I, I just knew that they were discontinued. They didn't make them anymore. And that I, I had this fear that that would be the last one that I would ever be able to find. So I ended up having at one point, one of each. I had a spear point one, a clip point one, the tonto point one. And eventually I, resold the other ones i made a little extra because obviously they're harder to find so they become more and more valuable and eventually decided to keep this one this was a plain edge one the other one i had i had given it some use and if you guys know about these old ones the coating chips off very easily it's very delicate actually and it'll show a chip or a scratch with almost any any use just opening boxes and simple things like that because the coating material is just um it doesn't stick very well to metal, I found out later. So I decided I was gonna keep one of them. It was gonna be this one so that I could touch up the edge and just put it away. I ended up keeping this knife for many, many years. And even though I did eventually buy one of the K-Bars that I really wanted, I did also eventually sell that one because it was more impractical for me. Whereas these knives I could put in my pocket and carry with me once I turned 18 and actually use them. It was just more practical for me. And I just really loved the look of this one, the black on black. I love the snap and the clicks that knives make when you open them. This is all very new to me, like I said, compared to, to my knowledge on, my limited knowledge on fixed blades and what I thought was available back then. Although this one goes unused, I still cherish it and take it out from time to time to remind me of where it all began. This model is still my favorite and has lots of features I like more than the new one. For starters, it has smoother deployment and it's easier to use one-handed as you can see you can just like there's so many ways to open and close this guy with one hand even in reverse grip whereas this one they put in the new triad lock and the triad lock is a back lock so it does require a little bit more care and efficiency in opening and closing it one-handed 
And regardless, it's just still not as fast as the other one. The other one's just so much more fun to open and close and play with. This one feels like it's a little bit sketchy if you're not using the second hand here to slowly lower this. Even though if you put your finger all the way up here, this part of the knife should not cut you. It should, you know, land down there. But the back locks are pretty hard to press. They have very strong springs. I do give them credit for creating this extremely tough and very durable lock. But I did like this one more for the purposes I used it for. And like back in the day um, on the internet, these knives were getting taken out into the woods and people were like chopping trees down with it and chopping bricks with them. And if you know if the knife broke, then it wasn't a it wasn't a good knife. But I wasn't doing any of that, so I still always miss this one. There was a time I was really wishing that they were gonna put this lock on this knife, but obviously I think the reason they stopped using this one, they might have had um like a patent run in with the Benchmade because of their axis lock. Even though this one is different and it does feature a closed design, as you can see, this is not open on the back here. You cannot see the stop pin from the spine. So anyways, the more symmetrical handle also allows it, um, just gives me better grips in, in different directions. Forward, you know, and, and reverse grip like this if you're cutting something towards you. Reverse grip this way, kind of like a pcal blade, or even just regular reverse grip with the edge out. I feel like the handle feels relatively the same no matter how you hold it. Whereas this brand over here, unfortunately, feels best in forward grip like this. You try to flip it over, it's not as comfortable because this, this thumb groove over here kind of pokes your the meat in your hand there. In reverse grip, it's pretty good, but it's kind of strange to have your, your pinky and ring finger sink down so much more than your forefinger and your middle finger. But it still feels like a very solid grip. And of course, holding it this way is just completely awkward and look, the skin on my hand is all pressed up there this is not yeah so the other knife just kind of gives me more grip options i feel like so i i did really like this straighter design a little bit more um i also like that this one has a reversible clip that the same clip it can be taken out and put on the opposite side whereas the new ones they kind of sell it to you with two clips i love that they brought it all the way up like this and they gave you more um more knife inside your pocket as opposed to this one you have like a lot more knife sticking out your pocket with this one with the old one but with a new one as you can see the clip is curved so it's a different clip for the left side they send it to you for free when you buy them but i just kind of like the fact that this is one clip that can be used for both sides and overall i think that this design is just more handsome honestly i just think it looks better feels better it's a little smoother it's still a pretty huge folding knife but i just think that it's it's a little bit more I don't know because it's smoother and you don't have to it's not like as i feel like it's not as forceful to open it seems more like a gentleman's knife for me if i had many more of them i would want like a stone washed one i think that would look different that would look better it would kind of take away the tacticalness of the knife a little bit more and still give you like a very a very usable design with a very nice um two-tone kind of kind of blade if cold steel ever did br bring it back I'd love to see a higher clip on it. Maybe they would bring it back as a, as, an, as a different kind of Recon 1 model. That would be really, really cool if they did that. And um, they could create it like this one with the better steel and the better coating as well. This is CTS XHP steel. And the coating, I'm not entirely sure what it's called right now. I'll put it in the description, but this is not a Teflon coating, whereas this one, would actually like in some places i think you can see it in my older videos you can scratch it off with your fingernail almost so um i'd like to see those upgrades this handle also has liners inside steel liners all throughout this one does not making this knife much lighter much thinner too because this lock also makes it wider and honestly though you, they can easily skeletonize those liners or they can just simply remove the liners like Benchmade does in some of their knives and kind of just keep the metal part over here to keep the lock and those parts in place. A flow through design would be appreciated too. I don't really see a reason why there, we need to have this um, closed off backspacer here. This one for sure you need it because it's a back lock, but in this one that's not really necessary. And if it was more like the CRKT Big Dog, you could put some holes here and maybe on the other side, that would really lighten the weight of the knife and it would make it a lot easier to clean as well. And lastly, this knife would actually do very well with a flipper. You have the space and all that stuff for it. 
it's closed off in the back here so the it doesn't get in the way of the lock or anything like that and this knife being so smooth would just be a wonderful knife to play with a flipper as well as this beautiful ambidextrous thumb disc that's another thing about this one that if you want to use a left-handed it's better to change the thumb the thumb stud to the opposite side even though it's not impossible it doesn't give you the same as with this one i have at times i'm righty but i have at times at work and stuff where i want to use my knife and i'm holding something with my right hand and i need to deploy my knife with the left hand and that's where it becomes a little bit more practical to have a thumb disc as opposed to a thumb stud well thank you guys for watching i appreciate your support i hope you liked the video um like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next one